What's going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. This is my cardiology playlist. In previous videos, we talked about chemically induced cardiomyopathy. We talked about Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, also known as stress cardiomyopathy or broken heart syndrome. We also talked about dilated cardiomyopathy and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Today we're talking about restrictive cardiomyopathy. Whenever you hear the word restrictive in medicine, think restricted from filling. This heart cannot fill. And if there is less input, there will be less output. So there is less cardiac output coming out of the heart. What causes restrictive cardiomyopathy? Sarcoid, amyloid, hemochromatosis, cancer, and fibrosis. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's get started. This is my cardiology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. What does restrictive lung disease and restrictive cardiomyopathy have in common? Again, whenever you hear the word restrictive in medicine, think restricted from failing. I cannot fail. I cannot fail as a lung. I cannot fail as a heart. I don't believe you. Go back to restrictive lung diseases. Watch my videos in my pulmonology playlist. And what did we say? We said that the air coming to the lung is decreased. The air leaving the lung is decreased. All the lung volumes and capacities are decreased. If there is less input, there is less output. So tidal volume, low. Inspiratory capacity, low. Inspiratory reserve volume, low. Residual volume, low. Functional residual capacity, low. Everything is low. How about the heart? Less input, less output. What's the name of the input to the heart? The venous return. The preload, the end diastolic volume. Less input equals less output. Does this affect the right ventricle or the left ventricle? How about both? When I cannot fill as a lung or I cannot fill as a heart, what's going to happen? Compliance decreased. Because what is compliance? It's the change in volume over change in pressure. If I cannot expand and fill because I have fibrosis, for example, what's going to happen to the change in volume? It decreases. And what's going to happen to my compliance? It decreases. So restrictive cardiomyopathy is a pathology of the muscles of the heart where the heart is restricted from filling with low compliance. Since the relationship between compliance and pressure is opposite, when I say that compliance decreases, what does that mean? It means increased filling pressure. Please do not confuse the volume with the pressure. Do not confuse the volume with the pressure. The heart cannot fill. There is less volume entering into the heart. However, the filling pressure, i.e. the pressure required to fill the heart, is high because of all of the fibrosis that I have to overcome. Back to basics. Here is your heart. The wall of the heart has three layers, endocardium on the inside, myocardium, that's the muscle layer, and pericardium on the outside. There are many types of cardiomyopathy, including dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, restrictive cardiomyopathy, Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, and chemically induced cardiomyopathy. We have talked about all of them before, except restrictive, which is today's topic. Recall, dilated cardiomyopathy, I'm very good at diastole, but I'm bad at systole. Hypertrophic is the opposite. I am good at systole because the muscle is so thick, but I'm bad at diastole. Restrictive, I am restricted from filling, which means I'm bad at diastole. And of course, if there is less input, there will be less output. What causes restrictive cardiomyopathy? It could be primary or it could be secondary to something else. What does primary mean? It means idiopathic, which means we are idiots and we cannot find out the pathology, i.e. unknown. When doctors uh, do not know the answer, they never admit it. They never say, I have no idea. They always say, oh, it's idiopathic, which is a fancy way of saying, I have no flipping idea. Some argue that this is due to a mutation in the gene that codes for the protein known as cardiac troponin 1. How about the secondary? Oh, it's secondary to another disease. Another disease started first, and then later it caused restrictive cardiomyopathy. Such as what? This song is by Dr. Conrad Fisher. Sarcoid, amyloid, hemochromatosis, cancer, and fibrosis. Whenever you say sarcoidosis, say Loeffler syndrome. If you want to know the difference, check out my rheumatology playlist. Amyloid. Amyloidosis has many types, and I've talked about this in my pathology playlist. 
Hemochromatosis can do it, which is iron overload. I can also add a glycogen storage disease, like pompase disease, and lysosomal storage disease, like Fabry's disease. Cancer, whether primary cancer starting in the heart or metastasis from somewhere else. Example, breast cancer, lung cancer, metastasizing to the heart. Next, fibrosis or endomyocardial fibroelastosis. Fibrosis, elastic fibers accumulation in the endocardium and the myocardium. How about after cardiothoracic surgery? I can get fibrosis. After radiation exposure near the heart, I can get fibrosis. After transplant, fibrosis. And of course, just like lung fibrosis made me restricted from filling my lungs, cardiac fibrosis will make me unable to fill the heart. I am restricted from filling less input and less cardiac output. If you said sarcoidosis, you better say systemic sclerosis and systemic lupus. And then the medications, doxorubicin, which destroyed the heart every day. It led to chemically induced cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy, as well as restrictive cardiomyopathy, basulfan, ergotamine, and the other ergot alkaloid, which is methysergite. Can you tell me when should we use ergotamine or methysergite? What are the indications? Comment below. If you want to download these notes, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want to understand restrictive cardiomyopathy, bring a piece of paper, a blue pen, and a red pen, and let's go to town. Okie dokie, here's my heart. Right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. What do we have? Restrictive cardiomyopathy. Oh, so I have fibrosis. All of this is my fibrosis. Do you think this heart can relax and accept blood? No, not when it's fibrotic like this. So there is less input to the heart, which means the end diastolic volume, whether the right ventricular end diastolic volume or left ventricular end diastolic volume, which means preload, by the way, it decreases, there is less input. If there is less input, what's gonna happen to my cardiac output? It decreases, and this is true for the right side of the heart and the left side of the heart. If it's true for the right side of the heart, what do I get? I get signs and symptoms of right-sided heart failure. Something upstairs, something downstairs, and something in the middle. Upstairs, jugular venous distension. Downstairs, lower limb edema. In between, congestion of the liver, also known as cardiac cirrhosis, or simply hepatomegaly. Under the microscope, this is the famous nutmeg liver. Every time I go to Starbucks and see their cinnamon and nutmeg, what do I remember? I remember cardiac cirrhosis because I'm sick. These are the signs and symptoms of right side heart failure. How about left sided heart failure? What do I get? Well, look at me. I will be unable to accept all of that blood to the left ventricle. So the blood will pile up into the left atrium. Blood will pile up into the pulmonary veins and my lungs will get congestion. Pulmonary congestion, pleural effusion, pulmonary edema, cough, dyspnea, orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, hemoptysis, and repeated chest infections. And you just said less input equals less output. What are the symptoms of low cardiac output? There is less blood supply to the heart. What do I get? I get angina. There is less blood supply to the brain. What do I get? I get fatigue, dizziness, drowsiness, obtundedness, confusion, exercise intolerance, fatigue, ischemic stroke, etc. There is less blood going to my kidney. What do I get? Acute kidney injury or acute renal failure. Hashtag pre-renal azotemia. What if my small intestine is receiving less blood? I get mesenteric ischemia. What if my large intestines are receiving less blood? I get ischemic colitis. What if my fingertips are receiving less blood? I am patriotic, red, white, and blue. Renaud's phenomenon. What if my liver is receiving less blood? I get ischemic hepatitis. What if my gallbladder is receiving less blood? I get a calculus cholecystitis. Who else is gonna teach you like this? Your freaking professor with his PowerPoint? Give me a break. And because my heart has fibrosis, I cannot give the blood to the heart. So there is sudden volume overload, which can lead to S3 heart sound. Less input equals less output, and I suffer from symptoms of CHF. Right side heart failure here, left side heart failure is here, and since there is less input, less output, symptoms of low cardiac output are here. Also, don't forget the possible effects on my kidneys, liver, gallbladder, small intestine, large intestine, etc. Some of the signs of left side heart failure are signs of lung congestion or pulmonary edema, such as the bat wing sign, syphilization of the vasculature, and curly B lines. 
Let's review everything we learn about restrictive cardiomyopathy. Causes could be idiopathic or could be secondary to something else like sarcoid, amyloid, hemochromatosis, cancer, and fibrosis. For the sophisticated, at lupus, scleroderma, and diabetes. For the robust, at Pompey's and Fabry's. I get signs and symptoms of CHF and signs and symptoms of low cardiac output. Don't forget the palpitations, the S3 gallop, and there is possibility for the Cosmol sign. Because when my heart is restricted from filling, where do you think it's gonna go? Oh, all of that blood is gonna accumulate in the right atrium, and then superior vena cava, and then internal jugular vein. During inspiration, my jugular veins should empty their blood into the heart. But if my heart cannot relax and accept that blood, then I can get positive Cosmol sign which means expansion of the neck veins during inspiration, which is the opposite of normal. This heart is bad at diastole, less input, less cardiac output. How can I diagnose restrictive cardiomyopathy? It's a diagnosis of exclusion. We'll need the history and the physical exam. BNP is usually elevated. When you do an echo, what would you find? Ejection fraction is low because if there is less input, there is less output. And if you do echo Doppler or Doppler echo, if you look at flow, you'll find diastolic dysfunction. The heart sucks at diastole. And there is impairment of the left ventricle more than the right ventricle, which is very important because this can help us differentiate between restrictive cardiomyopathy and constrictive pericarditis because in constrictive pericarditis, we impaired the four chambers during diastole. However, when the impairment is more in the left ventricle than the right, this is more likely restrictive. How can we treat restrictive cardiomyopathy? Try to treat the underlying cause. Try to decrease the preload because look at me, look at me, I'm filled with fluid. Try to lower the preload a little. Diet low in sodium, exercise is very important. Medications, diuretics can help because they lower the preload. Should I give beta blockers? Try not to give them because they raise the preload. And they can also lead to bradycardia. They make my heart slower, which lowers the cardiac output even more. Not the best idea. How about calcium channel blockers? Also try to avoid them because they lower the heart rate, which lowers cardiac output. They also raise the preload just like beta blockers because they lead to bradycardia. When everything hits the fan, try heart transplant, pacemaker, or implantable cardioverter defibrillator. Don't forget, anytime I have fibrosis in my heart, I can get arrhythmias. I can get palpitations. That's why we're doing this. Do you want to learn about cyanotic heart diseases and acyanotic heart diseases? Do you want to learn about the different types of shock? Cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, neurogenic shock, septic shock, anaphylactic shock, etc.? If so, download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. It comes with videos, notes, and cases. To learn about angina and myocardial infarction and many arrhythmias, to learn about ischemic stroke and hemorrhagic stroke, to learn about ARDS and diabetic ketoacidosis, to learn about drowning, hypothermia, hyperthermia, toxicology, etc., download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. I help you understand and pass exams. To learn about beta blockers, alpha blockers, the antihypertensives, the diuretics, digoxin, the antiarrhythmics, the antihyperlipidemics, etc., download my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalist.com. There are more than 300 premium videos available on this channel, only to those who click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you'd like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.